Hello, I know you're planning to register for your IELTS test soon. That's why you're here. Well, in this video, I'm not about to give you tips related to the four modules of the IELTS test. But I will be telling you five things you must know before registering for the IELTS test, especially in Nigeria. So let's go. I didn't introduce myself. But for those that are just joining us, my name is Kudus and I'm an IELTS expert here at Tutoria where we've trained many candidates who have scored a band 8.0 or more in their first sitting. Now to those five things. Number one, some people believe that registering with IDP, that is IDP IELTS, assures a better result because they consider the test will be easier compared to that of the British Council. I don't know the origin of the rumor, but I'm here to tell you that this is untrue. IDP, that is Mod IELTS, and the British Council are partners. You can register with either of the two. The quality, structure, and content of the tests remain the same. There is no difference. So you can register with either of the two. Number two, ensure that the details you impute while registering for the IELTS test match the information you have on your international passports. Please ensure that because your international passport will be your means of identification and everything must match. Number three, confirm the IELTS version you are to take before registry. Is it academic, general, life skills or IELTS for you KVI? Do your research or ask experts. It might be difficult to make changes especially when your test date is near. Number four, if you have speaking or listening difficulties and you want to take IELTS. Don't worry, the test creators can make arrangements for you. Visit the link on the screen to read about how arrangements can be made for your special requirements. You can type the link into your browser, just go on Google and type special arrangements for IELTS tests or you write special requirements uh, for IELTS tests. Number five, there is no general benchmark success or failure when it comes to IELTS. It all depends on the minimum requirement of whatever you want to use the test for. A band 6.5 could be a success to one person but a failure to another. Nonetheless, always aim high. So that's it. If you've learned a thing or two from this lesson, subscribe to this channel and turn on your post notification. Be the first to know when we post a new video and don't forget to like this video. So to access our ultimate IELTS preparatory course that prepares you to get not less than a band 8.0 in your first sitting, click on the link in the description below to start your preparation journey. Bye.